Lauren. Everybody, this is Sophie Williams. She's a student from the UK. You're no, welcome. Uh... You got a very attractive young lady over there staying with you. You ever make you think twice? I don't want to be living a life where I'm not choosing stuff. You don't seem as young as you actually are. One day you'll be free. Hi everybody, it's Bina007 back again for another 10 minute movie review. This week I'm looking at Drake Doremus's new movie, Breathe In, which is very much an art house drama. This is the follow up to his hugely successful romantic drama, Like Crazy, which won a bunch of awards at Sundance two years ago. And accordingly, because he's reuniting a lot of the people behind that movie, notably the composer Dustin O'Halloran, the DP, the stars, co-writers, everyone's really anticipating this movie greatly. So it did play Sundance this year. It didn't win any awards. And I'm afraid to say that I am completely unsurprised by this. But let's break it back to what the movie is about. So the setup of this film is nothing new in cinema. It's basically the tale of a young ingenue, an 18-year-old exchange student, played by Felicity Jones, who goes from England to upstate New York. And she's living with a family that's basically in some kind of emotional crisis even before she gets there. You've got the middle-aged father who is a piano teacher in school, but evidently very resentful about the creative life that he has given up to be married to his wife and to have his daughter. The wife, meanwhile, um, is perfectly happy with a suburban existence. And the daughter is a jock, you know, she's doing her swimming championships. And so the father, this sort of creative soul is is all alone and deeply um, resentful of life. And so into the mix comes this very beautiful, incredibly artistically talented girl who is the one person who reaches out to him, who understands how important it is for him to play in an orchestra. And they have this immediate connection. So the setup is pretty obvious. You realize, you know, that there's going to be some kind of boundary crossing relationship between the father and the exchange student. That's going to throw a spanner in the works of the family setup. What I like about what Drake Doremus does with this conventional story is in a way he takes it out of any kind of sleazy territory. He's very clear about the fact that there are no kind of psychodrama sort of boogeyman about to creep out of the wardrobe here. In fact, he deliberately creates a small part, um, played by Carl McLachlan of uh, Twin Peaks fame, of the kind of classic middle-aged crisis sleazy guy who's like, oh, you've got a hot young student living in your house, are you going to tap that? To show that, on the contrary, the husband in this family, played by Guy Pearce, is a genuinely earnest, lost, sensitive soul, and that his motivation towards this girl is not leery in any way. Um, And he's aware, and they talk about it, that he's trying to capture some kind of lost freedom with his relationship with her. The girl that's played by Felicity Jones, she's not some kind of, you know, femme fatale lolita type who's trying to make mayhem. I mean, we are absolutely in no doubt that this is a very earnest relationship. I guess the problem with the movie is that this very patient, mature, sophisticated approach leads to what is, in effect, a very banal first hour of the movie. And it's it's one thing to have, you know, intimate camera angles and meaningful longing glances from one character to the other and this sort of creeping tension. Actually, it's not even a creeping tension. It really isn't. Because there is no erotic sexual tension between these two characters. And it's and that is the fatal flaw of this film. There's no sexual tension. We're, we're not hanging breathless as to when they're going to have their first kiss. And it doesn't happen for ages. And it's just all so plodding. You know, we feel for them. They're lovely people. But we just don't care to spend our time with them as they explore their feelings, my word. 
And then, you know, without spoiling the movie, you do, of course, ratchet towards this final 10 minutes, which is tremendously melodramatic, because obviously something has to happen in this film, right? The wife must find out. There must be a confrontation. That's how these movies work. But it's so late on, and it feels so out of place within the context of the rest of this film, that it's just, it just cheapens it almost. So you have this earnest 70 minutes, I guess. You have this melodramatic 15 minutes and then the movie wraps up. And what are we left with? We're left with a feeling of great disappointment because, you know, Drake Doremus knows how to film things. He knows how to create visually striking images. His DP uses handheld DV um, and it gives this great sense of intimacy and beauty. The score by Dustin O'Halloran is so beautiful. It's, It's a score, you know, once again, that I really want to own. The performances, you know, Felicity Jones was tremendously exciting and like crazy, and she's very good here. We know that Guy Pearce is tremendously good, and they can, with an exchange of glances, express so much uh, nuanced emotion that that is, you know, very, very impressive. I'd also like to give a shout out to Mackenzie Davis, who plays the uh, the middle-aged couple's daughter, so the peer of the girl that the father maxed on to. She, again, she has a small role that's rather overwrought, but, you know, she's very much a, a young actress to watch, I think. So it's beautifully filmed, it's wonderfully scored, it's well acted, but there just is not enough meat on the bones of this film. There's not enough passion in there. It feels like a short story or a novella that's been stretched out way beyond the the length that its content can hold. So definitely a, a weak film and, and just not worth, I'm afraid to say, it's it's just not worth checking out. Now, I'm perfectly aware that I had a very strong reaction against Like Crazy, which most people love. Um, I suspect I'm not going to be so much in a minority on Breathe In. But if you do happen to check out the film anyway, I'd love to hear your take because I'm quite surprised at how thin I found it and how alienated and bored I was by it. So I'd love to get your your comments in on the blog, beena007.com, and to see what you thought in turn. In the meantime, have a great week and hopefully you'll tune in for the next review. Breathe In has a running time of 98 minutes. It has been rated 15 in the UK for strong language. It played Sundance 2013 and is currently on release in the UK and Ireland. It will be released in the Netherlands on November 7th, but it doesn't yet appear to have a release date in the USA. And I have to say, I'm not surprised that distributors are running a little bit shy of this film.